Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. 14 games tested, live gameplay on the $600 Acer Aspire E15 15.6 inch laptop computer. This thing is a beast. You get four cores, eight threads, a top turbo speed of 3.4 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of RAM, upgradable to 16, a NVIDIA GeForce MX150 two gigabyte graphics card, 256 gigabyte solid state drive, and a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS display. For the money, this is an amazing computer. Now in this video today, there are 14 games being tested. There's actually 16 benchmarks, two of them are tested twice. We'll get to that in a minute. Each game will be shown for one minute. If you want to skip to the benchmark charts, they will be at the 17 minute mark in this video. The idea here is to provide you with a small sampling of each game with the real time performance numbers in the upper left hand corner so you can see how the game actually plays. Benchmark charts are fine, but they don't tell the whole story. The real time performance numbers up there give you an idea of the CPU's clock speed, the graphics card's clock speed, how much of each is being used, how much main system RAM is being used, the real time frame rate during different parts of the game. Here in Players Unknown Battleground, the CPU clock speed has been jumping up and down. There is a power limit to these budget laptops. Basically, they're a 15 watt TDP chip and usually they can hold a decent clock speed until they get overwhelmed and have to drop it back. You'll notice the CPU clock speed keeps dropping down to 1600 megahertz at times. You'll see that in some gameplays, not in others, but this is why the live gameplay is so much more valuable than just showing you a couple of charts and why I'm doing this video. We are at the low detail preset at 1080p in Players Unknown Battleground, and frankly, the performance is less than stellar, so to speak. We're at 30 frames per second. Yes, you could lower the resolution to 720p, but are you really buying a $600 laptop to play at 720p at low detail? You can, but it's pretty brutal. This is what the $1,000 laptop I recently covered is really for that sort of game, and I'll be doing a comparison at some point in the future between the two machines. This is Star Wars The Old Republic, the online MMO game that is way too much fun and, well, challenging to run, needless to say. Now, the clock speed holds much better here, but the frame rate in the war zone, this is the player versus player section of the game, it's 8 versus 8. Yes, the frame rate is as bad as you're looking, and this game is six plus years old. Why is it so bad? It's the game engine. Take a look at the CPU. We are completely CPU bound here. We're only using two cores because the game only uses two cores. Notice that the GPU is not 100% utilized. The game simply isn't going to use the fact that we have four cores, eight threads. What we need is more clock speed. You're not going to find it in a laptop. A laptop is not the best way to play this game. The $1,000 Predator Helios will play it better, but not dramatically so. Moving on to Rocket League. This game is a ton of fun. More fun than I thought it would be, to be honest with you. Uh, we actually ended up winning this match, although I won't be showing you that because that's not the point of this, but it was actually fun and I enjoyed myself. You can also get this game for like $10 on Kingwin or sometimes on sale on Steam, so it's worth checking out if you like competitive online games like this. In any case, look at the frame rate. It's very nice. We are at max detail. Please note, I didn't turn it down to performance. I didn't pick one of the middles. We are at high quality detail presets. So we're running nearly 60 frames per second at that detail. If you want 100 frames a second, if you want 80 frames per second, lower the detail. I like the pretties, but if you don't care about the pretties and you want a more competitive gameplay experience, turn the detail down. Rocket League will run perfectly on this machine. The reality is this is the sort of game this machine is designed for. Not Players Unknown Battleground, not Ghost Recon Wildland. It's Rocket League and games like Rocket League that this is really meant for. Now, what about another game? Fortnite. Now, very similar in terms of concept to Players Unknown Battleground. More cartoony in its look, but actually quite demanding. Now, we're running at medium detail preset here, which is one notch above where we were running PUBG. I kind of expected this to do a little bit better, to be honest with you. You can see the CPU's clock speed is varying in the uh, 3.0 to 3.2 gigahertz range. It jumps up and down a bit. Notice the temperature on the CPU is quite warm. Now, I'm not running a cooling pad on this laptop, but I do have it mounted on a hard desk surface in an air-conditioned room, so there's no temperature issue in the room. This laptop just runs quite warm. In fact, it runs warmer than the $1,000 Predator Helios 300 does. And it does it with a whole lot less performance, but hey, it's $600, so it saves you money. Kind of proud of myself here. I'm throwing this shot in here. I did manage to get a good kill. Good for me. Then, then I got killed a few minutes later, but you know, it is what it is. Welcome to Fortnite. 
If you want 60 frames per second, turn it down to low detail instead of medium. Now we are on the ground combat portion of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now I quite like this game and I was expecting it to do maybe just a touch better than this low detail. The primary reason we're not getting better performance here, apart from the fact that the graphics card is fully utilized, is the CPU is downclocked. In order to handle the full constant load, we're, we're at 1600 megahertz. Now this CPU does turbo up to 3.7, but it's a 15 watt TDP chip. What that essentially means is that for burst performance, the clock speed can jump up and it does jump up very nicely. But when it's under full load, constant ongoing full demand load, it cannot take it. The Acer Predator Helios 300 has a 45 watt chip. It's actually three times as powerful, even though you go, wait a minute, they're both four core, eight thread. They're the clock speeds, it's 3.4 versus 3.8. They can't be that different. They really are, and this is why. Because of the full load on it, it just can't maintain the clock speed because of that 15 watt TDP limit. Now we're in Grand Theft Auto 5. Now this is the beginning of the run and everything hasn't heated up yet and so the clock speed's still good. It actually works its way down throughout the run. I played this for about 15 minutes. The benchmark numbers are from the full 15 minute run even though you're only seeing a minute of it. But it's not too bad overall. You can see the clock speeds are about 2, 2.7 at the moment. It's coming down slowly. The graphics card is actually not as utilized as you might think. We're CPU limited here, not graphics card limited. GTA 5 is very, very CPU demanding. It's also a couple of years old, and so it's not that demanding on the graphics card. We are playing at the normal detail preset, not high, not very high. Everything is turned down to normal levels. We are still at 1080p, but you notice we're also not at 60 frames per second. It's the CPU we saw hit 2.6 there. Again, it's, it's a 15 watt chip. It just isn't really meant for gaming. War Thunder. This might actually be the first time I've ever actually done a War Thunder benchmark. Several people have asked in the past. I've played it a little bit, enough to unlock a couple of tanks. By no means am I an expert War Thunder player. But I did play around here. Very smooth, very controllable. We are playing at high detail preset. I'm genuinely impressed how well this ran. Notice the clock speed. Because this game is not pulling hard on the CPU, the CPU is able to hold that 3.4 gigahertz max turbo speed. And this is kind of where you see some games fall apart and some games do really well. Because of the limit of this laptop, keep in mind the laptop was in the same physical location in the same air conditioned room for all these runs, when the CPU gets a full draw pulled on it, the clock speed starts dropping and the performance falls off a cliff. When you're running a game that is not CPU demanding, it actually runs just fine. It's basically, you have four cores, eight threads for momentary burst performance needs, not for sustained performance needs. That's why, for example, if you want to do video editing or other uh, multi-core demanding applications, the Acer Predator Helios is a much better machine for that. If you simply are doing burst workloads, opening web pages, opening videos, playing non-CPU demanding games, this one right here, World of Tanks, World of Thunder, and World of Tanks back to back. This is also at the high detail preset. Performance here is very, very similar to War Thunder. Now, both games, if you want over 60 frames per second, drop the detail setting down to medium, you'll definitely get an improvement. Drop it to low even if you want really good responsiveness. If you're a competitive player and high refresh rate is the most important thing, but you're on a strict, strict budget, sure, all these games can have their detail lowered, except for, of course for the ones that are already at minimum detail like Battlefront 2, and then you'll get better performance out of them. The, the primary limit to more performance here is the graphics card. Notice the graphics card's at 99%, and hey, we're on to our next game already. This is Heroes of the Storm, a game I don't benchmark for. I think I might have only benchmarked this one time in the past. High detail preset. Now, full disclosure, this is a game against bots. I have real players on my team, but there's bots on the enemy team. It was late at night. It was the easiest, quickest way to get into a battle. I only mention it because sometimes bot games have different performance requirements than player versus player games. I'm just letting you know what is what. In any case, look at the performance. We're doing just fine. We're at about 60 frames per second. Again, if you want more performance, lower the detail. We're at high. There's plenty of things to turn down to get better performance. But frankly, it's not the graphics chip that's limiting us. Notice that the GPU up there is not running at 100%. Notice the CPU is straining and it's not at 3.4, it's down at 3.1. You can lower the detail and you'd get a little bit better performance. 
you're probably not going to get 100 frames per second even if you lower it down to low simply because we have a fairly weak graphics card. Overwatch. Overwatch is way too much fun. And of course, we're playing with D.Va. Notice that the CPU clock speed is down at 1600 megahertz. We are, comp well, now it's not because it dropped down. But when we were at 50% CPU utilization, here it is again, 50% usage, all four cores are in demand. The CPU clock speed has to drop off 15 watt TDP. When the CPU drops to 25%, only using two cores, notice that the clock speed jumps up to 3.4, 3.1 gigahertz. The frame rate is fine. This actually runs pretty well. Now we're at medium detail preset, not high. You could lower it to low and you'd get a bit better performance, but because of the limitations of the CPU, it is never going to run at 100 frames per second on this machine. One fair point worth talking about is that there's frame rates and then there's controllability. This was completely controllable. In fact, in all respects, this laptop actually was very responsive. And part of the reason it was responsive, here we are in Battlefront 2 in space, part of the reason it's responsive is that four core eight thread CPU. Take a look at the CPU. We're nearly 100% utilized there. And okay, it's dropped back at this moment. It's going to bounce all over the place. Now, of course, I played an entire run here and benchmarked the whole thing. The clock speed is all over the place, but it's that usage. A four-core, four-thread chip is very limiting in 2018. And frankly, I wouldn't buy one at this point. You don't have to when $600 laptops come with four-core, eight-thread chips. Programs, uh, Windows, even Windows Update is now becoming multi-threaded. And you, whoa, that is a lot of obstacles to hit in this space battle. Who fights space battles and all that debris anyway? Long story short, eight threads is now the new minimum in my opinion, which is honestly why several people have asked me what I think about the new Intel i5s. I think that the six uh, threads is going to be limiting going forward. It works fine for today, but you aren't buying very much future with those. I think eight threads is the new minimum, and I think 12 or 16 threads is the new enthusiast level going forward. Back to Star Wars The Old Republic, but this time open world solo gameplay. Now, this is just against random enemies. I'm doing some heroics on Alderaan, and the important distinction here is the player versus player war zones has absolutely horrifically bad performance, but the uh, solo story mode out in the real world is actually fine. Would I play Star Wars The Old Republic on this laptop? Well, not if I could help it. Frankly, the Acer Predator Helios would be much nicer. But if this was my only option, if it was this or nothing, if it was this or a five-year-old laptop, sure. The solo gameplay is fine. The single-player story mode is fine. You could do that on this. Can you really do multiplayer war zones and operations, in-game raids and content on this laptop? No, it's dreadful. There's, it's not the graphics chip. It's not the graphics chip. It's the CPU is simply not powerful enough. It's not. It doesn't have enough clock speed. It doesn't have enough uh, total power. You'll notice that when you were watching that, the actual graphics chip was not running at 100% there. The same thing is going to be true here in World of Warships. World of Warships is far more CPU dependent than it is graphics card dependent. In fact, several times during this replay, the G in fact, you can see it right now, we're at 91, 93, 92% on the graphics chip. We are using most of it. We are not using all of it. The truth of the matter is a super fast graphics card is not required for this. A super fast CPU is. But wait a minute, you say we're only at 25, 20, 29% CPU. We're clearly not using all the CPU. Cores and threads. 100% usage would be all eight threads. This game does not use eight threads. It uses two, sometimes three. The reality is it wants, it's like Star Wars Yoda Republic. It wants clock speed and lots of it. A two core five gigahertz chip would actually be faster in this game and in Star Wars Yoda Republic than this eight thread chip running at, you can see the clock speed dropped way down there. Now we're going to play Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or more appropriately, we are watching a live online tournament. These are professional players who are much better than I am. Just in case you're thinking, I'm this good, rest assured, I am not. So basically, I went on live, found a current online game where the scores were racked up and they were doing really well. I started playing it and I started benchmarking it. I am so bad at this game, I've tried benchmarking it and it's just dreadful. I just died too quickly. So, not my cup of tea. In any case, we are playing at the medium detail preset. I realize a lot of people turn it to low. You want the highest frame rates possible. 
But to be completely blunt, if you're a competitive CSGO player, you're not playing on a $600 laptop. You're playing on something much nicer than this, or at least I certainly hope that you are. This is more for casual players. You, you need to spend more money if you are a, quote, pro player. That being said, notice we're above 60 frames per second. Not bad, all things considered. Turn the, turn the detail down a bit. It'll run a bit faster. However, the CPU is the primary limit to performance there. If you watch, the graphics card was not maxed out. League of Legends. What is there to say about League of Legends other than to say that we are playing at max detail? Yes, League of Legends, we finally found a game where you can max the detail out and this thing runs at 120 plus frames per second, no issue whatsoever. Anybody who's a serious League of Legends player should not be surprised by this result. This game plays fine on integrated graphics. You don't need a laptop with dedicated graphics to play it. The $350 Acer Aspire with integrated graphics would actually play this just fine, although honestly in 2018 I don't recommend that machine for different reasons, but yes, we're clearly getting spectacular performance. What's interesting is the graphics card is actually being fairly well utilized. The CPU, of course, is at two cores because that's what League of Legends does, but throughout this entire gameplay, we averaged way over 100 frames per second, completely smooth, totally playable in all respects. Finally, that brings us to our last game being benchmarked today, Minecraft. I have not done Minecraft in a while on my channel. Frankly, most of the computers these days run this so well, there's really not much to show. But since this is a fairly low-powered budget laptop, I thought I'd show it because this is a perfect example of a game that this laptop will play absolutely perfectly. You don't need a $1,000 machine to play this. Actually, truth be told, the $350 Acer Aspire will play this just fine, but that's neither here nor there. We, we are running at completely stock graphics settings. All of the renders and the chunks and the distance and the fancy are all set to the default settings. The truth of the matter is you could certainly set the view distance further. It will slow down a bit, but it will still play just fine. You can add mods and enhancements. You could build a pretty impressive world before the frame rate dropped below 60 frames per second. You could add so much additional content to this, build huge complicated worlds, and it will frankly be just fine. Now that brings us to the benchmark charts. I have three benchmark charts to show you. The first one here is average game performance at 1080p. Now you can see the detail settings used, low, medium, high, etc. Now League of Legends and Minecraft down there don't have those, but I do have the frame rates, and the reason being is I've set the chart shorter. If I have the chart show the 236 frames per second that Minecraft ran at, it compresses all the numbers and it makes it much too hard to read, so I put the numbers for League of Legends and Minecraft down there, and simply artificially shorten the chart so you can better see the numbers. Short version, this laptop is fine, but it's really not a gaming laptop. It will do it. It's great for casual gaming. It's great for esports. It's great for the for the very, very basic stuff. But as I showed you with certain games, Star Wars Battlefront 2 and PUBG, you really need a better laptop if those are your goal. I mentioned that Star Wars The Old Republic is playable on this. It is 60 frames per second, World of Warships as well, but of course it goes down from there. I tried to find detail settings where everything would run reasonably well. There wasn't much I could do for PUBG, of course. Now we're at the 1% low numbers. 99% of the time you'll get at least these performance numbers. Notice how fast everything drops down. Now the truth of the matter was it was all playable. Overwatch, uh, Battlefront 2, notice that the 1% low in space on Battlefront 2 was was 28 frames per second. That's when I died and respawned. The truth of the matter is that was that was actually quite nice. That played very, very well. Very controllable, very smooth, did not have a problem. You can see the rest of the numbers aren't that bad. PUBG was pretty rough. The player versus player war zone in Star Wars The Republic was pretty rough. Fortnite was okay. Fortnite I should have tested on low if I had it to do over again, but I'm not going to. It's fine. It works. It's a compromise. If you have the money, if you have $400, go buy the Acer Predator Helios $300,000 laptop. It is double the CPU performance. It is double the graphics card performance in gaming. It is absolutely worth every penny if you can afford it. That leads us to our last benchmark chart, which is the 0.1% low. It takes it one decimal place further. 99.9% .9 of the time, you'll get at least these numbers. But these numbers are terrible, so I don't really think this adds much to the equation. I include 0.1% lows because people ask for it, people expect it, and it's there. It's, once I've calculated the 1%, these are sitting there waiting for me. It's no big deal. 
That being said, all I'll say is that watch the actual gameplay. This is why I don't like benchmark charts. I think they only tell a very small portion of the story. Why is the performance here? How often does it drop down? Does it stay near these numbers a lot of the time and go to 100 frames per second? Or is it actually quite playable? That's why I'm showing you a minute of each of the gameplay so that you can make up your own mind rather than just look at some charts. Ideally, this is a non-gaming laptop for school, home, or work activities, document spreadsheets, PowerPoint, watching videos, image editing. This laptop is great. Gaming, I'd rather not. Only if you absolutely have to. Otherwise, get the $1,000 machine much better. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Check the video description for links. The video description will have links to the actual hardware review of this laptop itself. A link to Amazon.com where I bought this laptop and so should you if you want the best $600 laptop available on the market today. I will also put a link down there to the $1,000 Acer Predator Helios 300 gaming laptop computer. Double the performance, much nicer machine if gaming is your goal. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.